Greetings, wine lovers. If you don't think you like Chardonnay, today's episode of Bottle Talk is definitely gonna challenge that. Let's get straight to it. Welcome back to my wine channel. I'm Robert Stelmachuk, sommelier based here in beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia. And today on Bottle Talk, where as you know, wines get reviewed, never rated, we're going to South Africa and we're going to be tasting Edge Bastion. Edge Bastion is the brainchild of renowned winemaker David Finlayson. Kind of looks like America's Most Wanted Winemaker Edition. David is based in Stellenbosch where his vineyards sit at the base of the Simonsburg Mountains. He creates an epic line of entire wines that you should definitely check out. I understand that Chardonnay gets kind of a bad rap, but let me tell you, at the end of this episode, I'm gonna give you three things that you really need to understand about Chardonnay that's gonna help you appreciate it more and certainly drink a lot more and make your mouth a lot happier. This is an exclusive wine to our friends at Marquee Wine Cellars. So you can shop online or stop in the store and see them. They're fabulous people and they'll be able to help you out. And you can use my wine code, robertwine101, and they'll give you 10% off your entire purchase. So with that, right to the wine. Now, David learned his trade fermenting grape juice all over the globe. The likes of Chateau Margaux in Bordeaux, he worked for Peter Lehman in Australia, came back to South Africa, started Glen Carlu Winery in 2004, sold it, and bam, started Edge Bastion right to the wine. So on the nose, it's like a bouquet of almond blossoms. There's a lot of tangerine, orange, lime zest, nice sweet and tart citrus fruits are there. Minerally kind of component like crushed slate. Definitely a little button mushroom that you get in some Chablis. Grassy, forest herbs, kind of sauvage and for sure, a little tiny hit of caramel, kind of a little bit of buttered popcorn, cream corn, that kind of thing. Ultra cool. Let's get it in the mouth. Well, clutch my pearls. That's fabulous. My gosh. A lot of what I'm smelling naturally transfers over to the palate. But what strikes me initially is I get a texture to the wine. It kind of has this glycerol feel to it where it sits in your mouth and kind of caresses your tongue. A little bit of butterscotch, a little bit of that buttered popcorn butteriness to it. And again, if you're not familiar with where butter comes from, check out the link to this episode on why I like butter in my wine. You're not going to want to miss it. Certainly a bit of walnut, pecan, almonds come through. It's got a really nice disposition on it. Um, uh, that balance between flower blossoms and kind of grassy, herby, sweet tarragon. I, I, I get a lot of interesting condition on the fruit too. I get this kind of lemon custard, this kind of a little soft ginger note in the background as well. The wine kind of sits medium as far as body and structure goes. It doesn't really dominate the mouth and doesn't really slide by without being seen as well. So it's kind of like mama bear. It sits right in the middle. About 30% of this wine goes through malolactic fermentation. About 10% of the wine goes through new oak. So what does that mean to your mouth? Well, think of it this way. If this is the total volume of wine that's being made, about 10% of it will be taken, put into new oak casks, aged where it'll gain complexity, structure, texture, and a little bit of flavor, that little toasty vanilla, coconut kind of thing going on. And then when it's finished and it reaches the desired flavor profile and structure that the winemaker wants, they'll blend it back in into the final wine, making its overall impact a little more subtle. When I think of food with this wine, you can do pasta with a cream sauce, you can do grilled vegetables off the barbecue, certainly quesadillas, you can do a little sable fish with miso glaze, it's rich enough to stand up to that as well. There's a lot of different applications for this on the table and for your mouth right now. So three things that I think it's essential for you to know about Chardonnay. One, Chardonnay originates in the Burgundy region of France. It makes the likes of Montrachet and all the fabulous white burgundies that you see there. It also goes into Champagne, don't forget that. Two, not 
all Chardonnays are buttery. Some winemakers may choose to not let it go through that malolactic fermentation. In the likes of a lot of Chablis that are gonna be crisp and vibrant. And three, not all Chardonnays are oaky. In fact, globally, a lot of winemakers are getting away from that. If someone's helping you pick a wine, take that next step and say, if it is gonna be a Chardonnay, I prefer one with no oak or with oak. With oak can be glorious if it's done well and it has balance and harmony. It's a magical thing for your mouth. But Chardonnay is grown pretty much in every wine region around the world because it acts as such a great foundation to a winemaker. Now what the winemaker decides to build on that foundation is entirely up to them. They could be building something so simple as a, 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 a plywood shack or they could be building the Cathedral of Montrachet. It all depends on what their goal is. So that leads me to my great insider tip and honestly, your insider tip for this episode, don't focus so much on a particular grape. Focus on the style of wine that you and your mouth are after. Trust me, there's a Chardonnay out there for absolutely everyone. Until next episode, I'm Robert Stalmachuk. Thanks for watching.